What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Other Side of the Firewall, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up, what's up? And LaVon Maynard. What up? What's going on? So like I said, uh, last episode, if you're tuning in, we're back to the regular schedule. So before episodes this week, just like normal, uh, please like, share, subscribe, hit on the bells. Uh, share us with your friends, ask us a question, and we'll talk about all the socials when we get to the uh, the end of the episode. They're also in the uh, description in the bio. Um, uh, just keep us uh, on your radar uh, as we as we keep moving forward. So with that being said, we go to uh, our second topic of this week. I give it to you. All right. So uh, this article is actually by Elizabeth Montalbano of ThreatPost.com. And uh, the title is Nigerian Threat Actors Solicit Employees to Deploy Ransomware for Cut of Profits. Now, if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred (laughs) times, insider threat, right? It's going to be your greatest threat, whether it be intentional, which is in this case what they're recruiting for, or unintentional, right? Just having somebody that is just dangerous enough, you know, to to bring your stuff down or to to poke those holes and leave those attack vectors open, right? But um. But what it what it what they say here in this is kind of interesting, right? So like Nigerian, the Nigerians, right? Anytime you say Nigerians and it comes to any type of cyber or anything like that, you think about the the phishing scams, right? Like it's the hey, if you just give me twenty thousand dollars, I'll give you two million dollars when I get back to my kingdom. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that. They've, they've gone past that now, right? So they're like they're actually actively recruiting people. And one of the places they went to look was on LinkedIn, actually. Um, but it was researchers at Abnormal Security that identified and blocked a number of emails that were sent to them um, in, this month in, in August. And uh, so what they were doing was they were offering people a million dollars in Bitcoin to install demonware ransomware, right? Um, so the attackers, uh, they're, they're known as Black Kingdom or Demon, uh, these Niger- this Nigerian group, right? And so what they ended up doing, what uh, Abnormal Security ended up doing was they ended up playing along a little bit just to see what they were trying to do, right? So uh, they, they, you know, they had stopped these emails from going in. Uh, they had stopped these emails. And what happened was they, they reached back out to the group that sent it. And within a half hour, they got a response, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so in the response, within a half hour, they came back to them and was like, yeah, uh, they verified, the, the hackers verified, hey, do you have access to you know, uh, your company's servers, uh, Windows servers, uh, they said yes. Um, and they went back and forth like this for a few days. It was, I think it was five days. Hold on, let me verify that. Yep, researchers continue to communicate over five days with the threat actors as if they were willing to be a part of the scam, right? So what they did in going back and forth, uh, they told them, yeah, we'll give you a million dollars because they were going to ask for 2.5 million in Bitcoin. So this is 40% of what they were asking for with the ransomware, Mm -hmm. right? But in playing along with it, you know, they kind of, you got to make it seem legit, right? Like they're a little skittish to do it, you know, they... They, want, they were assured they wouldn't get caught. And so uh, they came back and told this, this Nigerian group, they were like, well, we only have revenue of 50 million, right? So then the price changes. They're like, okay, well, maybe we'll ask them for 250,000 or 120,000, you know what I mean? Um, uh, so uh, yeah, this is, it's kind of, it's, it's a honeypot pretty much, right? It's like the honeypot concept, right? You put something out there that looks attractive, you know what I mean? Them responding back to them saying, hey, uh, yeah, we're, we're willing to do it. Um, and this is how they figure out what's going on and what they're going to do. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's really a learning experience for this company to see, you know, how this, how this Nigerian group was going out there trying to recruit um, and to get people in, because as we spoke about before, right. In our, in, in the previous, uh, the previous subject that we did for the podcast, right. Um, this is one of those things where you will have people out there that are hard up, right? Like, like you were talking about LeVon before, you'll have people out there that are hard up that may want to get in on this and be like, yeah, I'll take the money. You know what I mean? What I'm, what I'm making isn't enough or whatever it may be. And in this current environment with, uh, with unemployment, I mean, this is somebody that's technically employed, right? But it could be one of those things where they're like, well, I got so many other things going on or, or, or whatever the situation may be. And, and, you know, they may, 
they may try to get on it and uh, and make it happen. But yeah, the Nigerians, man, they're trying to get more sophisticated, right? They know you're not falling for the emails anymore, right? <laughs> like I don't, I don't believe the prince. I don't believe if I give him twenty thousand uh, dollars, you know, he's gonna give me two million or whatever. Only fell for that once. No, I'm joking. <laughs> But, uh, but LeVon, what's your thoughts on this, man? <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, um, I think, you know, I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, situation. I think it's like, uh, um, kind of knew that this kind of stuff was happening on the back end. But it's like, uh, just to kind of have this article kind of like reinforce that. And in fact, you see a company that went through the process to kind of see how far they would go. And um, they actually went through the process of like, letting them kind of, I guess they, I was kind of glancing at the article. I just, I didn't get you to really read it earlier, but uh Looks like they actually, you know, got the file installed on some of the systems and like, you know, uh, maybe kind of tested it out to some some like uh, isolated systems or something like that. But um, it's uh, it's 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 kind of interesting that, you know, people or these these ransomware gangs are out here trying to recruit people. And uh, I know what I said on the last pa- uh, podcast, but or on the last episode that I feel like this is like probably, you know, where a lot of these ransomware is kind of. Uh, start out like from the weak chain from some employee or some whether it's somebody that does it intentionally or in, unintentionally um that they're actually like, causing these compromises within the company um but at the same time it can also happen through like hacks and just like uh vulnerabilities and systems things that aren't patched properly things of that nature it's kind of like a uh you know uh just a mistake or something that people just didn't catch but to know that people are out here trying to trying to like recruit your employees i think kind of Kind of tells us you know a couple of things one that we need to like make sure that um you know we're vetting our employees that, we, that are working for the company make sure they're the quality people that don't really like uh you know do some background check make sure they're not you know uh, uh in debt and all this kind of stuff the same kind of thing when people get like security clearances um but at the same time the companies need to make sure that they're looking out for the employees maybe that give them less incentive to like you know backstab or whatever you want to call it just to um try to get money out of the company if they really like the company they don't want to see the company go down and have to pay a bunch of money that they're they feel like they're valued and all that kind of stuff um but just just a couple of things that you know maybe we got to look out for the employees make sure that they're they don't have that kind of incentive and make sure that we're vetting them and make sure they're not going to be compromised like this in in the future but i think it's very interesting I, I i it's it's it'd be interesting to see how many other like um i don't know if, if more companies like this come up i think we did talk about this maybe with tesla a while back I think there was like a Russian group that reached out to a Tesla employee that wanted them to do something similar to this. And uh, I can't remember all the details of that one, but it's very similar to this. And I'm sure it happens with a lot of other companies. I'm sure people kind of turn them in and they probably, they probably don't make a big deal out of it. I like, don't want to like spread the word too much. You probably let, let like the like law enforcement or whoever, like you know, cyber security individuals that, that uh, um, to kind of let them know as far as what's going on. But, you don't hear a lot of stories about this. You don't hear about the particular groups of gangs that are like compromising, but um, I think that's pretty cool. But do you have some thoughts on it as well, Ryan? Yeah, if I was in Nigeria, I'd be like, stop blaming us. <laughs> like, <I> mean, <laughs> right. Leave it's, us not, it's not always us. It's not always us. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's pretty clever. Like, uh, as opposed to doing, like like we talked about last week, doing all the reconnaissance and the, uh, the pen test and all that stuff. Just find somebody who works there. Like, hey. <laughs> you want a yeah. piece of this i doubt they will get the money like i i foresee a future where people are, are doing this type of stuff and aiding um these uh ransomware gangs and not getting paid but going to jail so i would say definitely don't trust them like if they're nefarious enough to steal your company's data they're nefarious enough to just not pay you you're not right you're not a subcontract for these people you know what I mean? yeah so that's a good point and it would be weird. You all of a sudden you have a bunch of like they, they said the currency that they're asking for was uh Naira, N A I R A, just in your account. Like, Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> where does where does wire come from? Well, this yeah. Nigerian money. Like right. I don't know. It just it seems like it's it's set up for them to 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 uh to gain and for you to take the fall. So and like you said, the Russian did do something similar with that with a Tesla employee. Like yeah, you just drop this in here real quick. Yeah. <laughs> right. But. But yeah, you have to treat your employees right, right? You don't want to uh, create an insider threat. Like you need to pay them the, the right amount of money as well as not um, not make it a hostile work environment where you're like, you know what? Bump this company. I'm, right. I'm going <laughs> right. to let, let these dudes in real quick. So <laughs> This company's not doing it, anything it, for me. So 
Yeah, yeah it is pretty interesting though. And the, the haggling back and forth, like, uh, hey, we don't make that much money. Like, no, we'll, we'll lower it then. Cool. Thank you for the insider tip. <laughs> yeah. We won't ask for too much. We'll just get some and then we'll break you off a portion. Yeah. So, I, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, hopefully no one's falling for this. You gonna say something, Shannon? I was, I didn't want to cut you off, man. Go ahead. No, you good. You good. So so this could this could be one of two things as well, though, right? So um the first option could be that um they do know that the insider threat is the easiest way to get in somewhere, right? Like you do have right. people there, right? Like it, it's it's taught in all that cybersecurity training, right? The cyber awareness and all that, like the insider threat is is where the problem can be. Or two, it could be that these companies are actually getting better at hardening. And this is the route that they have to take, right? Like they can't keep poking at those firewalls or poking at all your, all your, uh, all your, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Just perimeter defenses. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Like your defense in depth is the the term I was looking for. Right, right. It's getting better, right? So now they have to go and do it a different way. And the insider threat is the way they do it, right? I'm hoping... I'm hoping it's the latter. It could be the former, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I hope these companies are getting better and they're paying attention to what's going on out there. But when it comes to paying your employees, I I, I actually saw I actually saw this uh, uh, this documentary recently or this series recently on Netflix. Uh, I know this is usually this is usually for the last segment we do of the week, but I throw this one out there because it kind of applies. And it was about dictators, right? And one of the things they said is that these dictators have to keep kind of a balance, right? So they have to pay their henchmen well enough, right? So that they don't eventually, <laughs> so they don't eventually overthrow them, right? Like right. This, this is one of the things that they said, and this is what you have to do with your employees, right? You have to keep them happy. You have to give them enough to not give them the incentive, you know, to go behind their back and do things like this, right? Um, now, mind you, there's not a lot of people in a company. Uh, let me let me not sit. Be careful how I say this. There's not a lot of people in a company that are making a million dollars, right? You know what I mean? For, for, you know, 20 minutes worth of work, if even that, right? Just to put something on a system. But you got to hope you're paying them enough to keep them honest and say, I don't want to lose what I have right now anyway, right? Yeah, it's good to have a million dollars, but let's say you're getting paid $200,000 a year. That's five years, five years worth of salary, right? Like you could lose that, <laughs> right? And go to jail for a, probably about that long, right? Where you got to worry about right. people putting money on your commissary. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to be in that boat. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, so, <laughs> yeah. like, it, it gets a little bit different at that point. Right. Um, but no, it's, 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 there is a healthy balance when it comes to paying your employees. Right. Um, and you got to hope, you got to hope these companies are looking at that. And, and, you know, especially now, again, with this, if this is going to become the more prevalent way that we see people trying to infiltrate these companies, um, these companies are going to have to step up their game. They're going to have to take they're going to have to take a little bit of a haircut on what they're pulling in, right? Because we all know what they pay the employees is not everything that the employee pulls in for them. They're they are making them more money than what they are paying them. You know what I mean? So that's just how it goes. Yeah, no doubt. I was trying to find the, the mute button. <laughs> yeah. I got I got a nose whistle. I don't want to pick up on the recording. Um, But it's funny that you should say that, though, because I was reading an article the other day, and this is just uh, slightly off topic, but it was saying that people are are doing multiple jobs from the at home type business. So people, like you said, some people racking up upwards of six hundred thousand dollars in salary because they have multiple jobs because now they have time. Right. Uh, Because they can knock out several different tasks and they don't have to be in one location. Right. So there's something to be said about that. Also, I would say stop snitching. Whoever wrote that article, stop snitching. (laughs) (laughs) So what? As long as they're getting the job done. <laughs> now you got em- employers out there worried, like, oh, I hope he's not cheating on me with somebody else. <laughs> making making twice the salary. But I, right. I digress. <laughs> but but definitely an interesting topic. I, you know, the world's crazy. Um, hopefully people are not going to fall for this. Because I don't even know what the ramifications are. Like, if you were to help an um, overseas body do international crime, like, what kind of prison do you go to? Like, it does not sound like it's worth it, to be honest with you. And these dudes are, uh, I keep saying dudes, but ladies and gentlemen from overseas who are, who are doing the, um, the, uh, the, the, the hacking or, or um, the pilfering of files, and things of that nature, they probably just disappear. Like, so you, you go take the rap. They'd be like, oh, it was, it was Lloyd from Department 5 <laughs> who let him in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now you've got a million dollar fine. But 
it, it is what it is. Like we'll see how this comes to fruition in the future. Um, hopefully, it's it's uh, just a minor trend uh, in the the grand, more grand ransomware um, uh, scene that's happening uh, over the past year, year and a half. But uh, with that being said, definitely hit us up on the socials. Definitely like, share, subscribe, thumbs this up, hit a bell or something to, to see when the next video drops, which um, will be the following day. Um, we're going to have four episodes a week, uh, potentially a fifth one, if uh, I can get off my lazy tail and, uh, and, and make it. But I need your questions. So ask us questions. We can uh, answer them here on the show or it could be on the, uh, the other podcast, the uh, Ask Us SP. But we want to know what the community thinks. We want to definitely um, get you guys more involved. Hit us up on at the website at www.theothersideofthefirewall.com. Hit us up on our socials. Uh, hit me up if you would like to uh, ask me a question at RyRy Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy. I'm on Clubhouse, Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn. I got it all this time. And uh, Levon, where can we find you at? Hit me up on the Twitters at Levon Maynard. There it is. So definitely stay tuned, stay safe, stay secure. Take care.